I was watching this thing about Hootie and the Blowfish recently. I was a massive Hootie and the Blowfish fan when I was <laughs> high school. Like, yeah. massive. Yeah. yeah. And Darius was, like, one of the first. I think he was my first ever interview that I ever did in my whole life. Oh. As, at 17, <laughs> 18 years old. Wow. And so I'm watching this history of Hootie, and they would always go, oh, you're Hootie, that's the Blowfish. And he was like, no, stop saying that, because that was one of his friends was named Hootie, one of his friends was named the Blowfish, and it was just, but it wasn't Hootie and the Blowfish, yeah. like the group. Yeah. So who's war, who's treaty? Uh, it depends on the day. Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I'm always the war. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. How, what, the, tell me about the name before we really get into each yeah. of you and your stories. And I'm just going to act like I know nothing. Okay. Because I do know a lot. Okay. We have the same management. I think we have the same... Almost everything is what's oh, really? weird. Yeah, I think we have the same PR people, too. Oh. Yeah, I think we have everything the same, so I probably know way too much. And it's always hard for me to do this when I know so much. Oh, so man. I'm really going to dumb it down. The War and Treaty. Michael, let's start. What's up with the name? Well, I mean, we, we had seven band names before. And, you know, I, I just looked at them and was like, none of these names make any sense. You know, and I kept changing the name, and Tanya was like, this is not how you brand. This isn't how you get professional. I'm like, I don't give a crap about being professional. I want the name to make some sort of sense. And so we start arguing. We're like going at it. And Tanya's like, Michael, calm down. This is not the war. We need to come to some sort of treaty about this. And I'm like, we just did. That's the name. The that's war a, That's how treaty. the name happened? Yeah. That's literally I how wanted, it happened. I wanted to keep going, fussing. But then, you know, he was like, that's it. And I'm like, what about it? Yeah, because like, we, cool. we were fans, we're yeah. massive fans of a band that used to be called yeah, the Civil, Civil Wars. Wars. Yeah, me too, same. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and Joy, I know Joy really well, Joy she's is, awesome. Yes. Yeah. You know, they both were just magical, and, um, you know, but I, I I, was like, we gotta have the word war somewhere in the band name because of my background, and and um, Tanya was like, well, you know, we don't need to change it. And I was like, we're not, that's the name right there, the War and Treaty. And, yeah. You know, that's how we got it. And you were just cool with that? I was cool with that. I thought yeah. it, it worked. What was the you name know? before? What would you come off of? Oh, my God. We Dude, had yeah. Empty Earth. <laughs> yeah, the, I don't like that one. Either. Yeah, we were Empty yeah. Earth. We were Trotter and Blunt, my maiden name. That sounds like a law firm. So we were Trotter like and what? Blunt. Like a Blunt? Like B-L-O-U-N-T. I wish it was like a Blunt. We would have kept yeah. the name. <laughs> but, but, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. We had uh, Dear Martha. Dear Martha. Who's Martha? Uh, some random name. Oh, name. <laughs> well, you know what? Warren Treaty. That's what we're going with. I like it. That's good. That's good. I was uh, working at the ACMs when you guys performed. We were, uh, let me say, I, th I thought you guys' performance was one of the best of the night. And that one visually was super cool, too. How they had you guys sitting across from each other into that microphone in between. Yeah. I don't know. First of all, I know who sang it and who has the chops. I mean, I've been with you guys at the Opry, too. We've been there at the same time. Yeah. So you sounded great. You look great. The idea, the visual behind that, where did that come from? Well, thank you. Uh, it came from Patrick and uh, the producers for the show. They had an idea of how they wanted us to uh, perform that song because they'd come to our concert out in California when we did the show. And uh, it was interesting when we did it in rehearsal. I wasn't as nervous, but, you know. In rehearsal, you weren't as nervous? I wasn't yeah. as nervous, but when I realized that this was our first time doing any of our own music, uh, and it was just us. On an award show. On an award yeah. show. You know, that's it. <laughs> you know, us holding hands. I was squeezing Michael's hand so hard. And if you look at the look back at the uh, film of the show, you'll see him saying, come closer. Because I was so nervous. <laughs> yeah. I was like freaking out. I was back there. And so I was right behind the stage because when some artists would come back, I would talk to them just to give producers time to kind of reset the next stage. Yeah. And so while you guys were on, um, I had an artist walk up to me and they were attracted to what you were doing both by your sound and also the visual and they were like wow that's great uh, and i said you know they're cousins right and they were like that looks weird for the cousins i said they're married i'm just kidding they're married they're married so you guys have been married for how long 12 years yeah mm -hmm. yeah and um but back to that visual for a second i i've seen that somewhere before um, well not somewhere before Tim and Faith was yeah. where I saw a version of that yeah I don't think they got up and walked to another set of microphones which was cool but I do remember when I first saw them doing that I was um we weren't we weren't together yeah. and I was just dreaming like man if I was married and I would want to like emulate that moment and and you know when they came up with the idea of us doing something a variation of that and um and then standing up and walking to another set 
I was like, oh, crap. You know, like, I'm, I'm really goofy. So I'm like, I'm going to fall. I'm going to step on dress. her dress. <laughs> like, something's going to happen yeah. here. And we're just going <laughs> to be Make a, a, a memorable him. moment. A worn treaty. I didn't feel like it was derivative of the Tim and Faith one, though, at all. You know? Yeah. So, and I don't know if that ever was a concern. I, I They had that in their Tim, their love. Uh, yeah. Loved, love, whatever that tour, that tour show. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. like. Soul to soul, that's what it was. <laughs> soul to soul. Love to love, soul to soul. <laughs> but I didn't feel like it was derivative. I felt it was super fresh. Yeah. Felt good. It felt, if you were cousins too much, married, it felt awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on where you're from. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm from yeah. Arkansas, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. It doesn't work here. <laughs> How'd you feel afterward? You walk off stage, do you guys go to each other like, that was amazing? Or how did it sound? Like, what's that conversation? So, during that moment, I mean, when we say we were nervous, we, we've, I've never, ever been nervous to sing. You know, it's been just super fun up until that moment. And I was literally backstage freaking out. That was your first time to be nervous singing ever? Yeah. I was wow. like, even as a kid, I mean, that moment right there, all leading up to it, I remember yeah. calling our managers and our label CEO. And I was like, hey, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I'm I'm a little terrified, you know. Yeah. And, 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 and Tanya was like, I'm not nervous at all, you know, all week. And then we get on the stage, <laughs> she's she's got like this death grip on my hands. And so I'm already nervous. <laughs> and I'm like And I'm sweating. I was like palms are sweating. It was just gross. I said, I love you. She said, I love you too. I said, let me go now. You're hurting me. I was like, it is hurts. And, and I'm like, and she's like, I don't know what to do. What are you supposed to do? She's freaking out or she for getting she's forgetting cues. And, and I'm like, Tanya, just stop. You know, I think we're gonna be fine. And and when we were done, um, you know, we we were walking off stage, and it was so cool because TJ from Brothers Osborne was standing right there waiting for us, and you know, we hugged, and and he's like, "You did it. That that's it. You're good." Coming you know? up yeah. on the like, Bobby Bones cool. show, a husband. Did you hear that? Yeah. Was <laughs> <laughs> Why did our promo fire off? <laughs> That is wild. It's like, okay, next. Are we, like, clued into the show <laughs> in the studio? I think we are. All right, well, that's so your time much. for today, guys. Thanks, it's man. Over. All right. Pleasure to be here. All right, there they are, the War Treaty. <laughs> so you see TJ. Yeah, TJ, and he he hugs us, and and, and then uh, we go around, and we see Kaylee Hammock and... Um, Randy Clark. And then we saw... Yeah. I think we saw John as well. Yeah, they're like big brothers just, you know, supporting us yeah. because they knew it was our... First time they, of course, we did the same days with them, but they I'm older than them. Like, They're not my big brother. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> they know they older than you. <laughs> it was great. Do you guys go and check socials? Is your phone blown up after that? I mean, I have to assume that everybody's like. Well, we weren't scheduled to go do um, what do you call it, the press or nothing like that. And um, but when we got done, you know, they were like, "Hey, they want you to come to the." Room. And I, I was just like, "Are you serious?" You know. And, you know, and we checked our yeah, we did check socials in the car. You know, just to to see, I was actually trying to see an eclipse of it or something. You know, because I I just wanted to see what, how it looked and how we sounded and stuff. And and it was just a flood of just people just really congratulating us and that kind of thing. Positivity, huh? Yeah, a lot of positivity. it was really great. It really was great. Yeah, Thank Zach you Bryan so much. caught us in the parking lot yeah. and, and Luke. Called, I mean, like the the camaraderie that mm -hmm. we felt from the artist was like really cool. Yeah. And uh, I guess yesterday <clears throat> was it day before yesterday we were at the, um, it was our show at the Brooklyn bowl and a lady was there and she said, I want you to see something because we never, of course you never see, get to see the back of the room when you're on the stage. And she had a video and she airdropped it to me and she was way in the back and she showed me the video. And I just like literally burst into tears because I didn't know that every. It was a standing ovation in, a, in an arena that mm -hmm. big, you know. So that just brought me. I was just like, she was crying, I was crying, and I could feel that all over again. So that kind of energy in the room, you know, is priceless. Yeah, and hard to replicate. Oh, yeah. And then you accidentally do it again, and you're like, I want to replicate it again, and you can't. <laughs> yeah. And then you accidentally do it again. But it was, it was fantastic. Thank you. Whenever we talked about your name, Michael, you mentioned you wanted war because of your background. Yeah. Uh, is that military service? Is yeah. that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. W um, why did you join the military? Ooh, just, uh, I had made a lot of mistakes, man, in my life. I mean, I had dropped out of high school. I was done with that. And um, I had made a baby, 
and my daughter, my sweet honey, and I had another one on the way, and I was just lost. I didn't know where to go, what to do, and um, I just knew I, I believed at that time I wasn't school material. You know, I, I didn't know what kind of material I would be, period, coming from the streets of Cleveland. and and uh, But my grandfather, my father, my uncle all served, and <clears throat> I knew that I wasn't too far off from how jacked up they were. So I was like, I'm, I think I'm going to go and join the Army. And uh, You went to Iraq, right? Oh, yeah. What was that like? Uh, for you, for for me, so man, um, I think it's it's it was a gift and a curse. You know, the gift was it's the first time I had any kind of relationship with someone who didn't look like me. You know, like I tell this all the time, even when we we're on stage. Like I had went through my whole life without encountering uh, white people at all. You know, and only reading what they put in the books and, and what they want you to know, whether it's on TV or whether it's in the books and the history or whatever. But when I got into the Army, it's like, all right, here we go. We're doing this, you know. And 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 then you start realizing that the color of your skin is the actual uniform and the flag, and you know, and then you start talking and realizing there ain't much difference. And that was the gift for me to be able to serve with those men and women, my battle buddies, you know, and... The curse was, and then you lose them. You don't realize, like, hey, um, this isn't forever, you know, and, and you forget sometimes, like, you're at war because people don't understand war. There's a lot of downtime. It's a lot of quiet. It's a lot of reflecting, and then all of a sudden, boom, there's a explosion or mortar round or IED or something like that. And, um, and then even that gave me a gift because then I started writing songs. My first song I ever wrote was in the, the war about one of my battle buddies who got killed. And um, I wrote it. I taught myself to play the piano and to make the song. And They have a piano there? Saddam. You know, in the palace? <clears throat> yeah. This isn't a, a, a well-known or well-publicized fact about him because it would kind of humanize a little bit. Um, this tyrant, but he was a prolific pianist. He had pianos everywhere in Iraq, and we just happened to take over one of the palaces that had his black upright piano. And a uh, little initials was carved, and I'm just singing and, and, and learning how to play, and that kind of thing. And um, I do the song I wrote for this particular soldier's memorial out there, and it brings so much resolution to the soldiers, you know, like the stuff I was putting in it. You know, I, I would talk about I'm, the things I would miss and the things I would not miss, you know, like the smell of his feet, you know, just little <laughs> stuff like that. Just trying to lighten the moment. And uh, my colonel at the time, shout out to Peter L. Jones, who watches, who, who's very familiar with your show. Um, he... Uh, Wanted to know if I wrote the song. I said, yeah. And he said, well, you know what? Um, that's what you're going to do for the remainder of your time in Iraq. You're going to go with me, learn about the, the fallen, and then you're going to write the song and perform it. Wow. And that became my job from 05 to the 07 when I would get out of the military. What was your job before that? Just infantry. I was uh, in the infantry. And really, it's whatever the Army needs. You know, but my sole focus was uh, protecting logistics, that kind of thing. And, uh, yeah, that's it's always a difficult part to tap into. You yeah, know? and I would imagine, too, with that, you talk about a, a you know, a, a curse and also something wonderful is that you're getting to do this for them and it's a wonderful thing, but you're constantly re-exposed to the hardest part of it. Yeah. I didn't know, I, I, because over ninety percent of the soldiers I was writing about, I knew, you know. So these are friends, and but when you're so focused on healing and you're so focused on taking everyone else's mind off of it, you're not focusing where you're putting your mind at the moment. And it wasn't until I got out where I realized I, I had a, I had, I had a problem. You know, I had PTSD and uh, depression and anxiety and. Um, it, it, it took my life over. I couldn't get jobs. I would, when I did get jobs, I'd lose the jobs because I would just freak out a little bit. 
um, Fourth of July was always hell, especially in Detroit, because. I don't know. Their Fourth of July is a little bit different than everyone else's. They got stuff that really sounds like no. I know that's a bomb. You know, like I don't know how Little Rocky got that, but you know. And um, this is when she first discovered there was a a real problem with me. I I mean, I'm I'm six two. Uh, I weigh about one hundred and ten pounds. You know, and <laughs> trying to dive under the couches hiding and, and my children are crying and I'm yelling commands, get down, get down. And, you know, the stuff that people for years have made jokes out of, shell shock. Mm -hmm. But, you know, um, until you really go through it, you don't realize how real it, it, it truthfully is, yeah. you know. I've done a lot of work with veterans like yourself and we would get them service dogs uh, through either us specifically or work through organizations. And one of the tools that soldiers would use when yeah. they would come back home is that service dog who would always keep them as grounded as possible into what is real yeah. because they've also got to take care of that dog. Mm -hmm. yep. And that's a big part of having a service dog is you can't just let that go. You yeah. got to take care of it while they're also trained. So, like, I, I respect it so much. Yeah, yeah. It's a difficult part. And even with the service dog, like, there's some things that most people don't consider when they offer that up to a soldier because it's very important, like you asked, what unit you know, with, with my particular unit, our focus was defusing a lot. And mm. um, most of the situations we would have to defuse or the bombs we had to defuse were carcasses or, you know, a dog is running up to you. And, you know, we love dogs, right? And you don't realize there's a wire hanging out of his tail. And you're like, what's going on? And then it's too late. Oof. So, you know, even babies and carriages, strollers, and stuff. So I had to really, I just shared this with my whole team and my wife um, not that long ago. I said, you know, I, um, oh, I know what it was in regards to, um, the shooting here in Nashville, right? Um, I had to, that, that situation helped me feel again in a way that I had lost that feeling, you know, because I'm, I'm, I've seen murder on a different scale, you know, and um, I, I, this year, I can honestly say I, I started feeling again. Like, I could feel that that pain. I could feel that loss, you know. And um, I think it's through the love of my wife and through treatment, you know, that I'm able to get to that point. But so many soldiers, it's just like, we got to drive on, you know. So, yeah. Tanya, where'd <clears> you grow up? I grew up in Washington, D.C., did you, were you always in, did you ever, were you Maryland at all? Yep, I was Maryland, uh, a lot of PG County. Yeah. Uh, Bethesda, you know, Potomac, that There's area. a fine line there, and yeah. I've done both. I've played the theater, like, literally in D.C., right next to the Capitol, mm -hmm. and then I've played the amphitheater, and there's, like, city and country, there and they are, that line is real <laughs> close is to each other. Close. And you go from one to the other, and there's no—you you know exactly where you are. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. where did you live in the city or the country? I kind of lived in both. I mean, PG County at the time, it wasn't as populated as it is. So we moved from Washington, D.C. My dad was a police officer, a Washington, D.C. police, police officer for 25 years. Um, and we ended up moving to PG County, which was very, you know, suburbs— so they would call us the suburbs girl when we went back to the city, you know. And I didn't realize it until I got older that there was a big difference. And then we would also go to New Bern, North Carolina, where my dad was from, every summer. So I had— I mean, that's the country right there. That's the real Bern. country. Yeah, that's the country. <laughs> that was dirt roads and hog pens in front of my grandmama's yard and all that stuff. So it was very different for me. Did and, you sing as a kid? Oh, yeah. How, how young and— um, I was eight. Okay. Eight years old when I started. Uh, my mom was from Panama, so I was listening to all kinds of music. I was like, "Am I gonna be Celia Cruz or am I gonna be Patti LaBelle?" You know. <laughs> so it was a, you know, I was just trying to make the difference. But eight years old was when I got the bug. Did you sing in church or was there a stage for you? Because usually, especially the artists that come in here, mm -hmm. church is always the first place that there's an open stage. That any, it don't matter how good you are, yeah, you can get up and make a joyful noise. Yeah. So did you sing in church at all? Oh yeah. Everywhere was a stage. I was one of those kids. So mm. whether it was a living room, whether it was a church, I was always entering myself in talent shows from age like seven. You know, did I was, you win I was them as a kid? It. Yeah, I was very extravagant as a kid. I was. <laughs> I was Were you good else. though? I don't know if I was good. More if the, the theatrics of it all sure. was good. You know, if you were to be an adult now and see you at seven, not know it was you singing, 
Where'd you go? That seven year old's got real potential to be a great singer. Where'd you go? That seven year old has got real potential to have potential. <laughs> 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 you know, it's interesting because I was so flamboyant and so wild. I would have said that that seven year old's going to make a good entertainer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because there was just no bars off when I was seven. I mean, there was I was free. Is that what you, you wanted know? to be when you grew up, a singer? No, I didn't. I wanted to be a lawyer. I wanted to practice entertainment law. But then I got the bug, and I was like, okay, this is a way for me to kind of, you know, get into music as a lawyer, is to sing. When did the bug change direction? Because apparently you always loved to sing, but mm-hmm. you thought you would do something else. When did it kind of consume you that, okay, I'm not going to do that. I am going to sing. Very interesting because I had my first record deal when I was 17. And I remember being in that and doing the music and putting out a record. I would say that the bug didn't really hit me until the war and treaty. Really? Yeah. It got me when I started doing with Michael and because I left my record deal. And when I was like 22, 23, and I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. The passion wasn't there. I didn't have that thing that it takes for you to go through the highs and lows with it. Yeah, that you know? thing that even though you're getting all the no's, you keep mm-hmm. going. Yes, that thing. I yeah. didn't have that thing. And once I got with the Warren Treaty and we were doing like coffee house tours and I was so happy. We would, <laughs> you would be in the tea, coffee shops and it's like two people clapping. But the music made me so happy and it was every genre of music <laughs> that I just loved that we were kind of, you know, a musical gumbo together. So the Warren Treaty gave me that spark. And when I met Michael out on that field at Laurel's Lake in Maryland, it was him out there in this hot, I mean, it had to be 95 degrees outside. He had a, a big coogee like sweater back then. You know, those were like the sweaters. But he was killing it. And his passion for it was just something that I remember at eight years old, climbing up in the tree in my backyard, writing little notes of my little songs back then that I had at eight years old. But I didn't have it 17 once I got the deal. But how, he had it. How'd you guys meet? At Laurel Lakes. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, a, a love festival, as cheesy as it sounds. It's, it's so cheesy. It's so a cheesy. love festival. I know. Yeah. It's so cheesy. I've never been to one of those. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds a little, you know, but. <laughs> it does sound a little, you know. <laughs> like, oh. But it's, it's not really. Maybe, maybe in 10 years. We'll it was a love festival. of the community. <laughs> yeah. They were giving out backpacks and they yeah. wanted singers. And, and mm-hmm. I was a local. Yeah. Local. And they were like, um, you should come sing, sing your, sing your song. Yeah, it was a festival that I would do in the city to give backpacks back to the underprivileged kids in our area, and Michael was one of the artists. So you saw him singing. Mm-hmm. You were drawn to him. Oh yeah. Were you drawn to him like that's an energy I want to be around, or like that's an energy I want to be around? <laughs> that's both. <laughs> <laughs> it was both. You know, I immediately gave him my my phone number, and um, he was there with his friend. We'll do you, do you remember her, her approaching you? Do you remember? I sure do. <laughs> I remember me approaching her, and she was ignoring my oh, conversation. He's telling, he's telling. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> so, what's the real story here? Yeah, that's not, my story is the real story. That's not. It's your side, my side, <laughs> yeah, and the I truth. Up, I walked up on Tanya, and, and this lady named Diane introduced us, and Tanya gave me her little hand, her little hand like this. And I was like, hi, I'm Michael. And she was like, I'm Tanya. And then turned right around and kept talking. I mean, he was, I was like, with his girlfriend. What am I? I, I peeped the that's scene. True. You know, that's true. I was like, let's see what's happening. I'm not going to, you know. Touche. However, however, yeah. you know, I, I, I remember her coming up to me at the end of my, my set. And she was like, did you write all these songs? And I said, yeah, yeah, I wrote them. And she told me about a project she and her brother were actually working on. And she wanted me to come in as a writer. And, um. She gave me her phone number. Right then? Yeah. Just from that one? Yeah. I want you to come in as a writer. If, Straight up. Yeah. I, she, she gave you, me her number and you, I threw you, it yeah, away. Yeah, I got you would have got it. Yeah, yeah I, I would have got, got it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he had no clue. I, I threw her number away. <laughs> really? Because, why? Because you had a girlfriend? No. Okay. I just, I, I, don't, I, I read into it. I was like, eh, she didn't she want. Me. She didn't want. Me. This is a fake number. You know what I mean? Tanya's beautiful and oh, I had a lot of esteem issues and, you know, I, I wasn't paying attention to writing. I'm, I am thought, like, yeah, this this is going to be us, you know. And uh, I threw the number away and instantly regretted it. And I'm driving my girlfriend at the time home. And it was her. She's like, you like her, don't you? And I was like, no. And yeah. <laughs> and she's like, I could see y'all together. Like, I was like, I could too. What, your girlfriend told you? Yeah. 
that she could see you yeah. with another person. Surely she said she's she, a sweetheart. Yeah, she is. She she definitely told me that. She was like, I can see y'all y'all's energy right there in that combo was like I was like, Really? Because I didn't I didn't think there was no energy there at all. But it was energy. How'd you guys find each other back then? If you don't have her number. I found her dad's a police. My dad's a police officer. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> He's a private detective at the time. I was like, okay, this is this true. Guy, All this is true. I wish they had face recognition back then. I That's so easy. funny. <laughs> yeah. So, you, so your dad just t- type, 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 got well, it? I mean, you know, I have my way. She ways. called I've, me I've, August 29th, 2010. Yep. I had literally, I know the exact time. It was like 2.15 p.m. Because I just got out of church. And I look down at my phone, this weird, strange number, and I'm with a whole bunch of homies, and and I, and I said hello, and she's like, Michael. I'm like, yeah. She's like, this is Tanya Blunt, and I'm like, hold on, shut up, everybody, shut up. This is her, man. She found me, and then I get back on the phone, mother. Hello. Hey. Don't try to get on. Hey, hey, hey. I'm like, is this yeah. Michael's a different voice? <laughs> and how guy. long till you guys went out? Oh my God, we were connected right away. Yeah, I think we maybe like a week later. You came over? No, I came over that Monday. Yeah, that next. I came over to her house that Monday, and we yeah. we talked about her story and 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 what she was trying to accomplish with the songs. And mm-hmm. I went home and just I was just like smitten, and I just wrote all these songs, mm-hmm. and I gave them all to her. You know, I was like, here, you know, yeah. and and she was like, yeah. what? You know, I'm like, they're yours. You know, I don't want any credit. I don't want nothing. You know, I didn't understand a lot back then, but I understood that I, I felt we were we were this was my wife, honestly. Yeah. And and there's a part of this that we're not talking about. What part? So Tanya I saw <laughs> Tanya before. Okay. That and part. so one of our band names what let's <laughs> <laughs> get talking about that part. <laughs> one of our band names was called Nine Years Apart. And Tanya and I are nine years apart. I saw her when I was nine years old. And I told my parents, that's my wife. So and she, they, she was zero? You were nine and she was zero? You no. Yeah, I was zero. I'm a saber tooth. Yes, yes. Yeah, I'm a saber tooth. Forget, I got you. forget I, the cougar. Yeah, I got you. And my dad laughed at me, you know, and, and I, I saw her in a movie. She was in the movie Sister Act 2. And, uh, what? Yeah. Yeah, her and Whoopi Gober, <laughs> Lauren Hill, and, and Tanya and, and Lauren had that famous scene um, in the church at the piano. Where Tanya was like, you take the top, I take the bottom. And they're singing his eyes on Sparrow. <laughs> and I fell in love with Tanya then. And so, you know, when I when we started talking, I remember running to my parents' house at like 3 in the morning, banging on their door. And they were like, what in the blank is wrong with you? And I'm like, I'm in love. I found her. <laughs> you know, so yeah. What do you think about that story? You think it's true? <laughs> I do. Okay. I, I mean, he, he it's commits to it. He's committed. He's committed. And, you know, me being nine years older than him, now I know that this is his thing. He came to me the other day. This is off topic. Oh, and he was like, God, Tanya, no. Uh, I'm they're gonna both, do they're it. both like, no, don't do <laughs> it. Yeah, he does it. I'm then doing she goes, it. don't do it. I'm he doing does, it. Yeah. I'm doing it. And he was just like, okay, I'm, luckily I can't remember her name. But he was like, babe, I got to have my pass, my hall pass. I got to show you who she is. And I'm thinking, okay. Oh, jeez. I'm going to lose all kinds of... Here I am. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm holding my breath. I'm like, she has to be some young, hot chick. She's on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Martha Stewart. Yeah. Yes. Did you that's, see that? Like 83, yeah. That's his... He is obsessed Whoa. with anything like 25, it was awesome. 40 years older than him. So I was like, oh, I'm going to always be young to him. <laughs> it's forever. Forever oh, young. <laughs> How long until you guys got married? Oh, my God. Right away. Like, we went out. My birthday was a month maybe in a week after we met, Michael came to my birthday party on September the 30th. We started dating October 1st and never had a day apart. And we got married in June. Yeah. It was n- never a day apart. You just knew? Yep. Yeah. That's quick. Yeah. I yeah. was like, I'm giving you a son. You know that, right? Yeah. How, she, yeah. how, did, you, did. how did you propose? You, you want to do this? <laughs> <laughs> Is that because you both just knew? Yeah, yeah, we just knew. It was just there. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, we had a, it was, it was you know, I never wanted to be apart from Tanya mm-hmm. from the moment, you know, we connected. And, and and it was just, I mean, it's still that way even now. She kicked yeah. me out of one of her acting le- um, classes yesterday, and I was so depressed. It was so hurt. I was like, why was don't like, you want to be around time me anymore? In 13 we just years. did the ACMs together. <laughs> <laughs> why do you want to leave me already? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we just have fun. I mean, like you know, we 
And we argue. I think when I knew is when we had like a big argument, a big blowout, and then it was over. And I was like, wait, we're not going to have like two days of just continuing this argument. Yeah. And we were just looking at each other like. Like you want ice cream now? <clears throat> play basketball? It's over. Mm-hmm. We're good. You know? Yeah. What happened? You fell off the stage at the Ryman. <laughs> okay, what, uh, just so you guys that aren't watching this, because some of you may be watching this, Tanya's shaking her head right now. Because <laughs> I, what happened? I could, we couldn't avoid. I, I just thought we would be able to avoid this. So, <laughs> the <laughs> the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, they did this this event this year called Rock the Ryman, and it's where you know artists today would choose two songs to cover from an artist who's in the Hall of Fame, but who has frequent the Ryman. Ty and I chose, of course, Ray Charles. But it's the second artist that we chose, which gives the problems. Who was it? Joan Jett. Joan Jett. And we did uh, I Hate Myself for Loving You. I, I'm telling you, and I, I was feeling myself. I had on this brown fringe jacket. Leather pants for I the had first on, time. I had on these, <laughs> this white shirt yeah and i had on these eddie murphy raw yes. leather red pants i just was like you were oh, looking man, hot I'm, too. I'm feeling good you were looking hot and I, I we were singing our first song was the ray charles take these chains and we did so well everybody enjoyed it you know it was on their feet the rhyme and i was like yes we got through that and now here comes the rock and roll song and we're doing great and i find i, I get like a what i call a warning shot because i I'm supposed to stand w- with Tanya. And Tanya kept going this way on the stage. And so I-, I decided to go around the piano to come up on her side so I can stay with her. And <clears throat> I trip. This is the warning shot I get. I- that should have said, Michael, take your big butt back over where you're supposed to be and just stay there and finish the song. You're killing it. But no, I just keep going. And uh, I get over to Tanya's side. And we're almost done. I hate so one myself. Note left. And we're doing this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, that's why. I, that's why. And I'm digging into it. And I go down. And I never come up. Yeah. I'm like, what was. Ha-? And in my head, I'm like, what's happening? And I go back and I hit my head on the piano. Mm. <clears throat> I'm out. I'm actually out for about, what? 40 seconds. Yeah, we yeah. count it. I'm out cold. Yeah. And. They're like, is your head okay when I come to? I'm like, my head's fine. Did the show stop? <coughs> they, stop? Well, they did. Well, I didn't <coughs> stop singing because he's such a trickster. So I thought he was doing like a Stone Cold Steve Austin move or something. And I'm like, oh, but he's down. He's he's feeling those red <laughs> pants today. So when he went down, you know, I didn't think anything of it until he was out when he hit his head on the piano. I looked down. I was like trying to shake him, and he wouldn't wake up. Well, our manager's so, yelling. Like, yeah. Close She's, the yeah, curtains. Get out, lower the curtains. Yeah. Can the people tell something's wrong in the crowd? Oh, yeah. yeah. You hear, you could hear it because they thought it was just a part of the show, too, but you could hear it go, oh, all the wind just Well, like, you know, Charlie Warsham? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He thought I was doing like a James Brown bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he's like, oh, yeah. Like down and back up. You're going to come yeah. back up slow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, I'm, I don't remember James Brown falling straight back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah me either. The piano. I remember going down on a knee and getting the cape put over and they're coming back up. Yeah. Not, and not, he, it, but Bobby, it's so weird because. The band is like digging into it once I dig into it. When I fall, it's like a <laughs> slow, it's like, <laughs> and it, it sounds even slower to me. I'm like, what is, and then the fans, so they finally lowered the rhyming curtains. And the, the fans, fans go over the there picking so up. You have, you have fans to, holding up to the To check curtain. on you? I like see them. Like, yeah, they're looking. What'd you, you broke? My fibula. Yeah. 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 And, and but I don't, I didn't need surgery. And, um, the way I broke it, it didn't destroy any like real cartilage or anything like that. But it was so weird, and, you know. And it's not a it's not a pain it's not a painful injury, honestly. It's just a lot of soreness, you know. And and when you turk it a little bit to 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 the left, because my injury was that way, I'm reminded, like, oh yeah, I, I did do something. Mm-hmm. You know, but, he's been milking it. <clears throat> I mean, he's milked it on this tour so oh, much. Man. Airports, 52 days. wheelchairs, baby. I will never. <laughs> I, I have all kind of fitness clothes now. I'm pushing that wheelchair. I'm like, I'm just. <laughs> I got PTSD. For that. They leave me in the middle of BNA sitting in this wheelchair, man. I'm like, can someone come push me to the daggling gate? Like, what about? 
And it makes me sit there like this. I'm like, oh, this he is He just looks so pitiful. He, he, he's been milking every minute of this injury. I- <laughs> when you guys got, uh, when you were together, which did you get together singing or in like a deep relationship first? Relationship first. Relationship first. Yeah. 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 We didn't sing together, um, I want to say, until about four years into knowing yeah. each other. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Even though you saw him sing, mm-hmm. yeah. you knew she sang, obviously, you gave, gave her some songs, yeah. you were involved, in, and you didn't sing together for that long. Mm-hmm. Why? She was only doing it for her brother. She was yeah. over music, mm-hmm. and, and I felt that was a tragedy. You know, Tanya was like, I'm... No, I don't, I don't want to. And then when it didn't work out with her and her brother, she was just yeah. done. And then we had a baby. And so she was, like, really enjoying motherhood all over again. Mm-hmm. And, and and I was just trying to make a life for us. You know, I mean, we counted it. Yeah, we were. You know were. what I'm about to say, right? Yeah. This is a weird thing. From 2010 all the way to about 20, <clears throat> the end of the 14th. Mm-hmm. We lived in 22 different places. Yeah. We were like homeless, struggling, yeah. bouncing from house to house, staying with friends. And and I was a struggling artist, and Tanya actually became my manager. Yeah. So I was trying to like make it. You know, I tried everything. I tried Christian music. I tried R&B because all of these styles were inside of me. Mm-hmm. And um, I even went and tried. You know, I, I never tried, but I had a, a country persona in these country songs. And, and my country name was Trotter Michaels. Very clever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it, needless to say. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we were done. We were, we were, we were, you know, and then uh, a friend of ours, mm-hmm. I wrote a song called I Am Love. And I was teaching it to Tanya for her and her brother. I was like, I think y'all should try this again. And the friend heard us. And she was like, "That that's not normal. You all need to really investigate mm-hmm. this. Yeah. Tanya, you're great alone. Michael, you're good. But together, you know, you guys have something that could shake some stuff up. Yeah. And that's the way I actually learned about his military service because I didn't know. We were married for, what, three, three four years? Yep. And I didn't know he'd <clears> served <throat> in the military. I didn't know he'd wow. gone to war. I just knew something was wrong. You know, I knew that there was something going on with him. I didn't know if he was depressed or what. But once I found out um, as the, with the War and Treaty, the song started really letting me into his world. So that's how I found out. And that 4th of July, mm-hmm, the 4th of July. That yep. was the last one. You were mm-hmm. like, okay, we can't do this anymore. Yeah. Like, you need to talk. Mm-hmm. And um, that was, you know, I, I, I was embarrassed of my service because when I came home, it wasn't a welcome party for me, you know. In fact, there are a lot of people angry that I even joined the Army. And I served under, uh, my commander-in-chief was George Bush, mm-hmm. who I I felt guilty for because I loved, you know, I actually loved um, Bush. And, you know, um, we were serving, and I remember coming home, I flew into BWI, and there were signs, and people were booing and throwing stuff at us. And I am I was like, oh, our country is not not happy because, you know, over in the war, we're away from all of that. We don't hear it. It's not on. We don't really have TVs in certain parts of the war, so <clears throat> computers and all that stuff. And, you know, you imagine you get home and you see, you hear booze in a real way. So I decided, you know what, um, I'm going to keep this quiet. And even going after jobs, I remember... Uh, with this one company, me and a guy was we were only two interviewing, and we were sitting there, and and he looked well put together. I looked well put together, and uh, we just wanted to scope each other out. Honestly, we just try to see which one was going to get this job, you know. And I'm like, so what's your background, man? And he's like, oh, I just got out of prison, and I was like, I got this job, you know. And <laughs> and he's like, yeah, man, uh, what's yours? I said, oh, I just came home from war, and I didn't know he was tallying over there as well, and. And he's like, you ain't no different from me, bro. I'm like, well, I, 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 I beg to differ. In my head, I'm like, I beg to differ. But he's like, three hots in the cot? I was like, three hots in the cot. He okay. said, you know, at the top of your, your position, barbed wire and guards, and they aiming in, right? I was like, wow. 
Yeah. He said, uh, I hope you do well, man. He got the job over me. I could not believe it. I was like, how did that happen? And then I understood that it was an incentive in our country to hire ex-cons first. You know, the employers were getting a little. Mm-hmm. You hire the ex-cons, rehab them and everything. And over a, a soldier who has valiantly fought and decorated. So I just decided I got to figure something else out. And I decided to go play the piano for churches. And I told Tanya, you know, at one point, <clears throat> I said, honey, I can't do it no more. I was making $125 a week. Ain't bringing in nothing. Mm-hmm. And I, I told her, I said, honey, I, I can't do it no more. And she said, well, I think we should sing now. And that that was the day. Mm-hmm. That was it? Yeah, that, that was, was the it. moment. That was and the she moment. introduced me to Civil Wars. Yeah. She showed me Civil Wars. She showed me this band called The Lone Bellow. Mm-hmm. She showed Shovels me. Shovels and Ropes. Shovels and Ropes. Yeah. Mumford and Sons. Yeah. And, but it wasn't until um, this one particular day I had lost a battle buddy, remember? Mm-hmm. And I saw an artist named Lee Bryce, a uh, music video called I Drive Your Truck. And it changed my life. It, it changed, and I still, <clears throat> I still feel it because I really needed him. Right then there. Never met this guy. Never had one phone conversation with him. But that guy saved my life that day. Lee Bryce, I drive your truck. And uh, I told Tanya, I said, Tanya, somehow, some way, I just want to do music that puts us in these circles mm-hmm. with people like that. Because he's got he's to have some sort of connection mm-hmm. with what I'm going through. Like, we got to know these yeah. kind of folks. And then Brantley Gilbert, that's one hell of a name, man. Mm-hmm. Like, Country music started really getting in pulling me yeah. out of my stupor. I mean, I I was I was there, bro. Like, you know, I had my letters. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah. You know, and Tanya convinced me to go get treatment and Yeah, and that was when we were able to the VA really stepped in for us right then and there and, and we it stabilized us a lot. So we didn't have to live from house to house and you know, country music was the one music when we listened to it, we could drink a beer, have wine, and have, say God at the same faith. time. <laughs> you know, and have faith at the same time. It was our whole experience. It was everything, you know, because every other music in you know, every other genre kind of, you know, you're hitting. And if you want to do Christian music, you better not have a beer. Mm-hmm. You know, if you want to do gospel music, it's the same thing. But you better not be having no sex <laughs> yeah, in exactly. gospel. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, country, you can do it all. And we, <laughs> So we loved it. So you guys, you you just start booking shows. You say coffee houses. Are you just show, showing up? Like, how does that start? Because that's the hardest part. That's well, her. Well, Michael ended up getting us a turtle top band. Yes, that, a conversion a band. conversion band, <laughs> which I thought was like a tour bus. I mean, you can tell me seven hundred bucks. <laughs> you can for the, tell for me the van. Yes, yeah. it was so. It had the seats that go back. The bucket the, seats. The it bucket was, seats. You know the the big old turtle top <laughs> conversion bands. <laughs> Yeah. Luxury had a little old TV at the top. I thought we were doing we it. We thought we were doing it. And Legend just was in heaven. Yeah, he, he named it Rocket. And I would be up all night long. I went through this thing, and I was just calling every coffee house a 95 quarter because we were in the Maryland area. So we would just do open mics, coffee houses, whatever would let us play. You know, and I would I created a little 30-city tour. <laughs> Oh, our oh, first God, gig here, we, we made it all the way up to Nashville. Yeah. Our first gig here. It was Tennessee. Was our first gig here was Tennessee Brew Works. Works. Yeah. They want us to play for four hours for tips. Yeah. And I was like, sure. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> we it's Nashville. I don't even care. This was yeah. in 2015. Yep. And we, we, we literally got through three songs before we, we had to quit this gig because we were being heckled. In a real way. Yeah. It was horrible. I mean, they were heckling us. Boo! Go back to where you came from. This is yeah, awful. Yeah. And do you want to know who it was? It was our four-year-old son. <laughs> Legend. He's throwing salt up like confetti. He's like, oh, that sucks. Look at me. And he's squirting the ketchup. Bottle. And I'm like, I'm, I'm trying to sing this. So I'm looking at Tony like, get your son. She's like, he's your son today. And I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. And we we pause and we go give him a talking to in the bathroom. I'm like, 
if you don't stop, <laughs> I'm going to rain down all fire on you. Do you understand? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> we go back out there. He's like. He's worse. <laughs> he's like. You suck, and I was like, "Oh my god!" Like, and people were like <laughs> laughing, and he wasn't I just supposed to be in there because we didn't have a baby. We had no babysitter. <laughs> I told Ty, I said, "I said I'll go take care of it." And I went and told the person that booked. I was like, "Hey, man," um, he was like, "Just go, just go, man." I I I understand. I was like, "I'm I'm so sorry," and I told Ty, I said, "We'll never be back." Yeah, this. ever. They'll never have us back. <laughs> Yeah, that was wild. That was wild time. We would have to go like on nanny.com to find nannies to watch them for like two hours at the venue. It was hard, you know, but we No one we believed. Did. Our families didn't. Yeah. No one thought that. They thought we were cuckoo. Yeah. I mean, like we, we would go play shows. I remember our, our parents came to one show and there was like four people in the yeah. audience. And my dad was like, he called me the next day. He was like, <laughs> is this what you really want to do? <laughs> he was like, I don't think this is a good idea. <laughs> We had a violinist, a piano, and a tambourine. No, it was a cello player. The cello player. Yeah. We were like stomping, hit the little floor, stomp. My dad was like, I don't know if this is a good idea. You yeah. you know, you you went to college and <laughs> Americana. <laughs> when did it start to be a, the right idea? America we were mm. President Trump got elected. Was that twenty sixteen? Yeah, twenty sixteen. Twenty sixteen. Right? Yeah. yeah. I remember we did a show in Tampa and um, at the Palladium. Mm -hmm. Remember this? I do. President Trump just got elected. And it was me, Tanya, and our cellist. He was a white guy, Tillman Benham. Hello, Tillman. And um, I said, I don't know what we're going to walk into because we're in Tampa, Florida. And I've been hearing, like, some mumblings. And I'm like, but we're here to unite. I said, that's our purpose. That's what we're here for. And when we walk through the curtain... We were met with all these cheers. We sold it out. I couldn't believe that. Yeah. Like, we sold it out. However, I swear you would have thought you were in the 60s. All the black people were on this side, and all of the white people were on that side. It was split in half. And I just couldn't believe it. And and we, I said to the band, I said to, to Tanya and, and Tim, I said, you know, we can't do a show like this. And they were like, what are you going to do? I said, everybody stand up. And they were all cheering and stand up. I said, okay. I said, meet me in the center. I said, now, shake a person's hand who you don't know. And then y'all decide where you're going to sit. And that's how we're going to do the show. And everyone sat with someone they did not know and who didn't. You couldn't sit with a person that looked like you. you know. And we did the show that night. And for me, the reviews of that show and what people were saying that was when it clicked. And then the next day, mm -hmm. Ann DeLisi from WDET in Detroit called us. She was blowing our phone up. She said, Don Was is looking for you. And um, like, yeah. are you serious? And everything just changed from there. Don Was got us to Buddy Miller, who got us to Nashville. Mm -hmm. You know, Buddy Miller. You know Buddy Miller? Mm -hmm. Buddy Miller is a... He's like an Americana god, like the America, the genre of Americana. And uh, he used to play in Emmy Lou Harris's band. And, and then he became like this good, great producer. He and his wife, Buddy and Julie mm -hmm. Miller. And, um, and, and Buddy, he was the music executive over Nashville, the TV show, for, for some time. Buddy produced our first album. And he taught us so much, but he said, Nashville is about collaboration. And he said, I want you to know you have a place here. You belong here. We need you here. And Emmylou Harris. Yeah. Just, she made me brownies for my birthday and, and brought them to our very first recording session. And she just held our hands and just breathed. And I was like, holy crap, this is happening. Yeah. All of that just shifted and changed things for us. The McCreary sisters, who are a Nashville staple, um, just the, the the Americana community really started embracing us and really started giving us the confidence we needed. When, would you say that, babe? Yeah, definitely. I think it, that was the turning point for us because our record was playing in um, Tampa where we had our show. They were promoting it, and, and that's how Don Waz heard it. So when he called, I was like, well, 
maybe if we have the attention of a Don Waz who mm-hmm. produced such you know big acts as the Rolling Stones and stuff like that, I'm like maybe we have something. So it was great. Yeah. Do you guys live here now? Yeah. We do. You do. When did you move to Nashville? Twenty eighteen. Yeah. Kicking and screaming. I did not want to she move to Nashville. <laughs> so right before the pandemic ish. Yeah. 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 Why did you not want to listen, I didn't want to move here either when I <laughs> yeah. did. Yeah. I, I, uh, now it's great. Mm-hmm. But I was the same way. Yeah. I really didn't want to move here. I didn't want to move here. We lived in a small town. We were just coming together after all the you know, homeless and different things like that. We were living in a little town called Albia, Michigan, where everybody knows your name and you're always glad you came, you know, <laughs> kind of town. And I loved it so much. And Legend loved it. And it, I could walk to the post office. I she was walk. kicking and screaming going there too. Mind yeah, you. I was. I was. Just- <laughs> Anyway, and it's it was too cold. cold. Yeah, it was cold. I was like, freezing. No, I don't like the cold. So That's what heaters are for. Tiny so cold. I literally, when we moved to Nashville, never went outside for like nine months. I didn't go. I would go. Michael would go to the grocery store. He loved it. And then you know we would tour and stuff like that. And and when we had some time off, and we ended up moving to um, the other part of town, I ended up liking it. Yeah. It's all about the part of town, see? Yeah. No, well, I mean, you know. No, <laughs> because is. then she started going out in Nashville and yeah. was like, oh, my God, I love Nashville. Yeah. I'm like, I tried to yeah. explain this to you. It's like Dallas and, uh, what do I say, Dallas and somewhere mixed together, California without the water. <laughs> I mean, Nashville's what? like, it is good food. Everything's bigger, you know. I took her line dancing. That yeah, was fun. At the Nashville Palace. I got video of me dancing. He was getting it. I was looking crazy. She needs she needs help. <laughs> I, I'm, like, I'm pretty good. Feet. Yeah, he's pretty good. Pretty let's, smooth. Let's talk about Lover's Game. Why? I, obviously, it's a track, but why'd you choose the, that to name the record? Just the the our love affair with Nashville, in my opinion. You know, we talk about stuff in there like Margarita Hot Chicken, Strawberry Wine. You know, courtesy of Dave Cop. But you know, everyone moves here chasing the dream. You know, it's a songwriter's dream, it's an artist's dream. And I remember our first bout in Nashville was walking through the Country Music Hall of Fame. We were there to help induct Dottie West. And it's just this love affair. I loved it. Tanya hated it. And there was a game to play in order to stay here. And um, from that moment on, I just thought about, you know, Tanya, this is, I feel like this is setting up our life in a way that our lives haven't been set up before. And songs from there just followed. Like the journey, blank page, just starting from a, a blank canvas and mm-hmm. building your own story. You know, we know the stories that come with Nashville, but to be a part of making a whole nother story, you know, and then realizing there's no harm that can be done to you when you're staying true to yourself. Ain't no harm in me. And then yesterday's burn, just leaving that baggage behind and so on, you know. That ain't no harm in me. We played that on the countdown, right, Mike? Didn't have to put that yeah, on? Yeah. yeah. That's a good one. I put Thank that on the you. National Countdown oh, Thanks. in March. Thank yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's awesome. uh, well, we played some stuff before you guys came in in the intro and talked about you know all of the you know the technical stuff people needed to know. I just wanted to kind of get to know you guys. I want our audience that didn't know you already to get to know you guys. <laughs> you guys can go to uh, Instagram, TikTok, The War and Treaty, which good for you for having your own name. Because <laughs> man, it's so hard. Somebody, <laughs> you got to grab it. I still don't have at Bobby Bones. <laughs> Yeah, wow. I still have to have Mr. Bobby Bones. Like, I think I'm some <laughs> someone worthy yeah. of having to be called Mr. Well, that's just putting some respect on that's your name. That's right. But I had to put it on my own name. That's a problem. <laughs> you had to put some respect yeah, nobody on else your put name. It, nobody else put that on. <laughs> you know, that, that meme is so funny because Charlamagne the Goddess, one of, my, one of my dear friends, and that happened on the Breakfast Club show. Yes. Where they, they put some respect on my respect name. Respect on my name. Yeah. With uh, the K. Congratulations, guys, really. Congratulations, and congratulations on... I don't know, creating a fighting chance for yourself. Because that's what we're all doing. Yeah. Thank you. I still feel like I'm doing the same thing. Like, my win is still being in the arena, making my own story. Yes. And now you guys have accomplished that, where now you're doing it your own way. <coughs> you're, you're getting big opportunities and taking advantage of them. And <coughs> it's really cool to see. It's, so congratulations. Bobby, Thank can you. I say one Thank more you thing? So much. Say, what, say okay. go, go for it. I think artists, they get a chance to say these kind of things at, to you after they've had several successes or a record spin or something like that. But I just wanted to tell you um, something from from me um, and, and Tanya. We're massive fans of yours, even your story, right? Your story is very reminiscent of, for me, if 
you took my head off of my shoulders and put them on yours and reversed it, I don't think you could really tell the difference in the stories. But the thing for me is when we were at the Opry that time and um, when you announced us and, 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 and told folks that um, they were going to feel things, you know, like me and Tanya, you know, I, I, I couldn't get myself together because to have somebody massive as you to help validate us in the performance space, you know, people get that often from like Ryan Seacrest or they'll get it from back in the day, Dick Clark. And it's like, you're our version of this. And to be able to, to do that for us, you know, it means so much. And, you know, I heard Lanny Wilson say this one time. She said, um, I'm not, I, I, I know a lot of people don't know me, but, um, you know, thank you for the opportunity and I promise I won't let you down. You know, Ty and I, we feel like saying that here, you know, because um, especially in the temperature of today's society where people don't understand radio personalities, they have to believe in you too in order to help build you. But, you know, um, whatever you believe and feel in, in war and treaty, you know, we, 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 don't want to let you down. I don't think we will, you know, and, and just thanks for the opportunity to be on your show and, and to talk to you and let your listeners get a chance to hear us. We don't take it lightly. So well, I appreciate that. And usually I make a joke and make fun of myself and do some sort of <laughs> self-deprecating humor to get out of the situation. <laughs> but I'm just going to say thank you. That's very kind of yeah, you. And cool. everything I've ever said, either here with you guys or about you guys or playing you on the countdown, like, I mean it. I got 10,000 people I can play at any time. Yeah. And I don't owe anybody any favors. That's right. Yeah. And so I get to do <clears throat> what I want to do. And, you know, the way I talk about you guys, you guys now get to create your own story. Yeah. Like, I'm doing that, too. And sometimes I choose to do it about you guys. Wow. Yeah. Because I want to. I appreciate that. Thank so, you. Yeah. So, really, I, we're just, it's just the beginning. That's what's crazy. Yeah. It's just the beginning. And you've lived two lives already. You lived <laughs> yeah. two lives worth of life. <laughs> yeah. And it's just still the beginning. <laughs> That's what's crazy about it. <laughs> I know. Crazy. You work so hard. Now you get to really work hard. Like you've, yeah. you've worked so hard yeah. that now, congratulations, it's time to work it's even time harder. To work even harder. But yeah. that's like a luxury. Yeah. yeah. The luxury is you get to go into to the arena and work even harder. Yeah. Right. So I'm proud for you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. And Thank you that's you guys go at the Warren Treaty. You guys hit up Lover's Game and. Mike, anything you want to say before we go? This was awesome. Yeah, I don't really I know just, how to... I'm not good with compliments. I don't know how to end it now. I'm just kind of like, <laughs> do we just turn it off? I don't know. We just hop out of here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you wow. guys go follow at The Warren Treaty and check out their music, and we'll see you guys soon.